Welcome to part two of our discussion of managed business configuration. In today's session, we're going to talk about how the process changes once you get contingent workers and or onboarding involved. So if that sounds exciting to you, stick around. In part one of this series, we went through managed business configuration. And we went through it line by line. We talked about how to make fields required, how to disable the fields, how business rules get involved in the process, the filtering, you name it. We went through things pretty exhaustively from the standpoint of if you are just doing Employee Central. The question though becomes how does the process change when you start getting other related uh, functionalities involved? Um, so today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how the configuration process changes if you are using um, onboarding or if you are using contingent worker management or CWM. Uh, so everything that we're going to talk about today is basically layered on top of everything we learned already. So everything that we learned last time still applies, but we're just going to be putting some new stuff on top of it now. So. So with all of that said, let's get going. So uh, first thing you're going to do is type in manage business configuration, same as last time. This should look familiar to you if you watched part one of this series. Um, this is where we go to do all of our config. Uh, but today we're going to look at something new. So I'm going to expand email info and you see here that there is something called configure person type. And uh, as I expand further on some of the other portlets, you can see that they also have something called uh, configure person type. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on today is the fact that there are uh, different person types. So I'm going to click on this now for emergency contact primary. And you can see here I can configure a new person type and the person type is where I would say, okay, I need a specific flavor of configuration that it, uh, pertains to um, uh, one of my person types. So in this example, uh, you can see that we have the employee and contingent worker as a possibility. And so by choosing, let's say contingent worker here, I could create a configuration uh, variety that applies specifically to uh, the contingent worker. And so I could configure the field slightly differently. Um, and I'm going to get into the weeds of exactly how this works here in a minute. But uh, right now, I just wanted you to see how easy it is. If I press save, I would actually have a different uh, variety of configuration specific to the contingent worker. Okay, so we're going to cancel out of here and we're going to go down and look at person info or biographical information because we've got some specific configuration set up here. And this will be a, a, a way for us to show, first of all, uh, how the... Uh, configuration looks and then go through some practical examples. So you can see here, we have um, already set up uh, person types of contingent worker, uh, employee and onboardee. So we have examples set up for that, but let's go first, let's look at this. I'm gonna call this the main node and this is what we've already looked at previously. And so this is the uh, the configuration we've already looked at previously uh, in, in step one or in unit one of this series. And you can see here that we have identify Fire, label, enabled, mandatory, and then details. And so I want you to notice as we go and we look at the contingent worker that we have fewer fields available here. So there's no uh, label here, um, but all that is, and there's no details. So instead, all we have is the ability to um, enable fields, um, also provide visibility, whether the field's going to be visible or not, and then whether or not the field is mandatory. And so you can see here for contingent worker, that's an example of how you could adjust and do contingent worker configuration slightly differently than you are for the um, some of the other person types. So let's go in now and uh, we're going to talk about a, a specific example. So we're gonna go through a practical example first to illustrate how things work. And then we're gonna turn around and just give the overall concepts and rules behind what we are going to be showing you. So in our example, the business requirement is uh, related to the date of birth field. And um, for regular employees, uh, the date of birth field should be required. 
Um, for contingent workers, the date of birth field should be hidden. We don't need it at all. And lastly, for onboarding, the date of birth field needs to be optional. And the reason is that recruiting is going to be feeding onboarding and recruiting does not typically capture the date of birth. And so if you want to have the ability for the recruiting system to create an onboardee, the date of birth field has to be optional. So with those requirements, let's look at how we need to set up the configuration. So first let's navigate to the main node um, for our biographical information. And you can see here that we have a uh, date of birth uh, set as enabled, uh, but we do not have it set to mandatory. Um, next, um, let's look at what this looks like for contingent worker. And you can see here that we have the date of birth set as uh, enabled equals no. So this field is not even enabled at all for our contingent worker. And next, let's look at employee. And as uh, per our requirements, you can see that not only is the field enabled for uh, uh, the employee, but also is made mandatory. And again, this is on the person type uh, of employee. Um, now let's look at what it looks like on the onboardee. And you can see that date of birth is set to enabled, but uh, is set to non-mandatory. So this allows us to uh, handle the, the functionality and the requirements ac across three uh, really separate person types. So now let's talk about the configuration, uh, the rules uh, behind how we want to set up these various person types. So let's start by talking about what goes on the main node. Uh, the main node is where we would enable the field. So whatever fields we need on the uh, portlet at all uh, should be enabled in the main, main node. Um, we're also going to be adding in field filters, uh, business rules, synchronization rules, and labels. So we went through a lot of those. I actually went through all of those uh, as part of uh, unit one. So if you have any questions, you can go back and look at that. Next, we're going to cover uh, employee and em onboardee configuration together because they really go hand in hand. So the first point we want to make is an important one, and that is if you do not have any differences in configuration between the two person types, employee and onboardee, do not go to the trouble of creating two different person types because this ends up with duplicate configuration that you're going to have to maintain over time. In the case where one of the person types needs a field required and the other needs the field not required, that's when you're going to need to create two separate person types, one for an onboardee and one for an employee. And you're going to make the field required on the one and make optional on the other. Uh, this is, of course, the, the way it was in our example where date of birth ended up being uh, required for our employee but optional for our onboardee. Now, in the case that one of the person types needs a field enabled and the other does not need the field enabled, uh, for that case, you actually only need to create a person type for the uh, uh, version that does not need the field enabled. So on the main node, you would enable the field and then on the person type that needs it disabled, you would create that person type and then just, uh, of course, uh, disable the field there. Now let's look at contingent workers. Uh, contingent workers does its own thing. Um, basically, uh, for contingent workers, you can hide fields, um, make fields required, or even enable fields uh, on the contingent worker person type that are not uh, set that way on the main node. So basically, you have a lot more flexibility when it comes to contingent workers. So it does not necessarily have to spend as much time thinking about what the rest of the uh, person types are doing. So uh, that's the good news with the uh, contingent worker type. Before we wrap up, I have just a few more points. The first is that comp info does not have the ability to do person types. Uh, that is just a limitation that exists today. So I wanted to make sure we call that out. The other thing though I wanted to call out is that uh, there is the ability, uh, particularly on job information, to um, expand the country specific fields and uh, create person types for that. So you can create a job information 
uh, USA uh, type. So that's a that's just uh, that's just basically uh, uh, following through with some of the functionality we already have learned. The last thing I want to talk about today is something that's important, and that is the ability to migrate this functionality to uh, other environments. And so uh, in order to do that, you don't do this through instant sync. Instead, um, what I'm going to show you is the object where the person type configuration is stored. And that is it's stored under manage data and it is person element configuration. So this object, as you'll see when I click on the drop dropdown, um, all of the um, field definition that we are doing is stored kind of as an overlay as an on an MDF object. So you can see here um, the way that this set is set up, it should look very familiar to you. And so you can go in, use import and export data and export the person element configuration, and then you would be able to import this into your subsequent environments. So that is our tour of person types. Hopefully you found this useful. If so, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.